Gamer activated. <laughs> My name is Evan the Astro Kid, and I am here with my co-host, The Duke. And we have a Super Smash Brothers game in just a few minutes. We are in week three of the ECAC regular season, and we've got some exciting stuff. This is going to be Wayne State College versus our Sagu Esports Lions team. And I'm excited. How are you feeling, The Duke? I am so excited. This is quite the run back because, mm. uh, as some of you might know, this is the run back from Grands from last season. So... Granted, this is not the the grand final tournament or whatever, but we get to play them and hope to beat them or do better than we did last semester. Mm, absolutely. And, and this being kind of like a, you know, next semester rematch, there's a lot of weight on this, but some things are different. It's true. Um, I heard that uh, one of their key players has now either graduated or moved on or of the sorts. And so now Saki is looking... You know, up and ready and may possibly take this week three victory and continue their undefeated streak of being 3-0, and oh, as both teams right now are both two wins, zero losses. But just to recap from last week, uh, our Sagu Lions played against Illinois Wesleyan, taking the win against them. And that was another one of those uh, pivotal rematches from the previous semester. Yeah. And uh, Taylor Halo, BKR, Efer, all doing a really phenomenal job. Um, and we are excited to get this game going, but just for all of you viewers who have no idea what this Super Smash Brothers Ultimate game is, I'm going to go into a little how-to just for anyone who may be confused. So this, is, this game, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, is known as a platform fighter where you play a, a character on a floating platform and try to hit the other characters off said platform to win. You can win by either a point system or a limited life system, with the most common being each character has a limited amount of lives, and in this game they're referred to as stocks. 
There is also an invisible wall or barrier right outside the view of the screen, and if you get knocked into said invisible barrier, you lose a stock, and it goes all the way around, even the bottom. Each time your character gets hit, you have a percentage associated with your character that will increase. This percentage can be seen at the bottom of your screen. Your character's percentage is the one next to your character's little picture icon. The more that percentage increases, the more you fly back from each successive hit you receive, making it easier for the opponent to knock you into the invisible barrier and make you lose one of your stocks. Each character has a basic amount of 27 button press combinations, or in this game they're known as moves. Um, that they can use to increase the percentage on the opponent and knock them into the barrier. Some characters have additional moves that are specific to their character, while others have just the basic 27 moves. But each character's moves, even the basic 27, are unique and function differently from all other 86 characters in the game. There are different shapes and sizes of platforms that can be chosen, and these are known as stages. In the basic game, there are 103 stages you can choose to play in, but in competitive Smash Brothers, which is what we're doing now, Correct. there are only eight legal stages. This allows competitive games to be fair for all players and characters, and each stage has different elements like smaller platforms, moving platforms, and different size barriers that can make the game more dynamic. Now, for the ECAC Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Competition, we are doing what is known as a crew battle uh, rule set for this game. Now, in a crew battle, there are two teams with three players on each team, and each player with their own character that they play. Each player has three stocks, giving nine stocks in total for the team as a whole. The first two players fight each other, trying to take the other player's three stocks. Once one player loses all three of their stocks, that team rotates to the next player in order. Teams don't move on to the next player until the current player loses all three of their stocks. Um... And then the team to make the other team lose all nine of their stocks wins the set, and you must win two sets out of the three to win the game. And um, this kind of helps create this teamwork aspect because you can have one person playing against um, all three of the other opponents taking five, six, seven stocks, and the other team just keeps rotating through their players. And the first person, if they don't lose their stocks, they stay in and they keep playing. Mm -hmm. And especially if someone earlier on gets a really big run and is really in a good headspace, that can be a huge game changer because now you have all these stocks to work with, whereas the other team is getting... Uh, the stocks are essentially the resource of this game. And you are trying to whittle them down to zero to take the win. But this is going to be really, really cool. For the Sagu lineup, we have Taylor Halo, who is playing his uh, infamous Misor fighter. And he is going to be our anchor, which is the usual... Well, actually, we don't officially know this, but I'm, I'm making it's assumptions true. here. It's true. I'm making assumptions. They, there's a whole strategic opponent when it comes to matchups, who goes first, who goes last. And a lot of those can play into how this game progresses. But just off of my uh, just out-of-the-blue intuition... Um, you know, from yes. recent history. But but here's the thing about Wayne State is Wayne State has been the one school in this league that has made Sagu like have to question how they work and make different changes. I would say to to kind of some strategy. So I'm really excited to see what the Lions plan on doing. Okay, that's fair. So whoever goes when we have Taylor Halo on Me Sword Fighter. He is. Absolutely phenomenal. He plays all around the DFW area, and his Mii Sword Fighter, in my opinion, is the best in the world. I think so. Really, really strong, really consistent. He's got a great um, play style of playing patient, waiting for the other opponent to make a move first, and then just kind of hitting his game plan as hard as he can until he takes a stock. Um, next, we have BKR on Diddy Kong. Very good Diddy Kong. A very, yeah. Probably the best Diddy Kong that I know personally. And um, he just has this really aggressive yet really patient play style. And, and it's, he very much plays to his own tempo. And it's really strong, especially if you can catch the opponent off guard and learn their play style and get the edge. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have Efer playing Luigi. Luigi is a very combo-heavy character. And if you don't know what combo means, it's when you... Um, are able to do a move that leads into a second move and a third and a fourth and and that can turn into what is known as a combo and Luigi is a kind of character where if you can hit very specific moves you can usually get multiple moves after that and it can be really really strong yeah. and we have seen Efer just absolutely crank up that wind knob and take entire 
like take entire sets almost. He is the king of misfires. What can I say? Yes, um, Luigi, the character he plays, one of his mechanics is he can shoot out like a rocket, and there's a 10% chance he basically does a bunch of damage, goes really fast. It's known as a misfire, and he just finds a way to hit that 10%. He likes rolling the dice, and he's really good at it. Yeah, he's. It's. It, it, you don't think someone could be good at luck, but we see it happen. Yeah. All the time. Um, but we're actually about to get into this first game, um, and apparently it looks like BKR is starting. Um, now for the um, WSC lineup, we have Chef Louie, phenomenal player. Mm -hmm. He's been playing for quite a while. He played um, last semester in Grand Finals and the other times that Sagu Lions played them, and he is a really, really strong Terry player, but I've heard some whispers that he may pull out another character today. We'll see. So we will just have to see what kind of matchup we're looking at here. Um, but their uh, next player for the WSC lineup is Two Week Old Pickle. Very um, wonderful, unique username that is just so splendid. Mm -hmm. And then Egg Two. I don't know what happened to Egg One, but he's not here. Here we have Egg Two. And these three make up the WSC lineup. And this is going to be a very good match. Uh, the Duke, what is your prediction for this game? I'm very curious. Ah, uh, you know, okay, so here's the thing, is Wayne State, and how Wayne State has played in the majority of the matches that I have witnessed them play in the previous seasons, have played with two really, really amazing, solid players who would play at the beginning and at the end. And so they would kind of rotate out their uh, middle player, and we would always see, you know, either Chef Louis starting, and then they have a player, and then... Um, they had a Ridley as an anchor at the very, very end of the, for a while, but that Ridley, um, as far as I'm aware, is no longer playing and no longer competing, whether that is just because they're off the team or because they've graduated. Um, but it's definitely going to have to change their play style, and they're going to have to kind of move around the fact that they don't have that player anymore. So they're going to have to bring somebody else in and then base how they line up their players around that. Mm. Absolutely. Honestly, I am hoping for a really strong performance from Efer and BKR. We mm -hmm. know that Talo is consistent. We know that he can get the games and get the stocks. We're not We've worried about him. And BKR and Efer, they have so much potential. Their their play styles, their dynamic with each other has been just growing, has been going higher and higher. And I honestly, I think personally, it's going to go 3-0. I really do. I would I love to see it. I think it's going to be a 3-0 Sagu, Sagu Lion sweep. That's going to be my prediction for this. What about you? Oh, uh, my apologies. I was just told that this is a best of three. As I, You know what I think it is? I think it's going to be a 2-0. You think it's going to really, be a 2 Really, just because it's yes. a best of no. <laughs> Yeah, th thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yes, my prediction is going to be a 2-0. Um, I think that the Sagu Lions are going to take all games and I really don't think they're going to slip. All of them are in the right head space. They're ready to play. They're ready mm -hmm. to game. And I don't know. I've just got a lot of high hopes for our guys right now. I mean, they've been practicing the matchups. They're, they've been playing online, which is a very different game than in person just because some of the lag. We've talked about that on a previous um, stream of the games. Yeah. But yeah, and it looks like that we are going into what appears to be a lag test just to test if the internet internet connection is stable or not. That's why we see the ice climbers popping out. Yes, of course. Um, just to reiterate, the lag is basically the internet gamer term for delay. And when a game is lagging, it can really dampen the competitive atmosphere and the competitive play style because it's so hard to play yeah. when you push something, it doesn't work, things are slow, it's not responding because these games happen in milliseconds. Yeah. It is a very fast paced, very quick action game. So if things are slowed down against your will, it can completely throw off your entire play style. So a lot of times like we're seeing here is they'll do a lag test where they'll go into a game just for fun, just to see how things are feeling. And if it looks like the internet connection is good, things are quick, things are responsive, then they'll go ahead and start the first match. Mm -hmm. But, but again, this is this is not game one. Mm, absolutely, no. This is this is from what we assume just a test. And as you can see, they're just kind of running around, doing moves, making sure things are responsive, um, and double checking that all is well with the internet connection, so that they can play a fast-paced balanced, fun, competitive Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Yeah, which quite uh, honestly, it looks like there's really no latency. I mean, sure, there's going to be some, but it looks like it's 
really, really, you know, quick and responsive. So yeah. I'm really excited for these next couple yeah, of games. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm very, very excited. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. As we said, this is the Saggy Sports Network. Uh, my name is Evan the Astro Kid. Um, I'm the Duke. And we've got a really cool game coming up here in just a minute or two. But as we're waiting for this game, I want to ask you, um, when it comes to character matchups, I feel like that's going to play a really big part in this game. Mm -hmm. What is something to look for when thinking up a game plan? Because game plan is everything. How you're going to go into a match, the strategies beforehand, wh what do you think is going to be able to get him the win here? I mean, past experience, really. Because if you think about it this way, you have you know, your character that you're really, really practicing with, and you're going to obviously have characters that you've practiced against more than others just because that's how it works you, you play against certain people who play certain characters and so it's going to be you know who do you have experience against and do you know how that other player fights with their character mm, absolutely and these guys have played a whole lot of super smash brothers so we're hoping this past experience can get them the win but we're gonna hop into game one right here and we are seeing an incineroar which is very very interesting um i'm going to assume that this is not Chef Louie. I don't know if this is one of their other players um, that is in the game right now, two-week-old pickle or egg two. But as we can see, uh, BKR with his Diddy Kong is getting a really strong start. Um, one of Diddy Kong's abilities is he can grab a banana and throw it at the opponent, which causes them to fall over and basically puts them in a position where they can't do anything. Now, this can be really strong for Diddy Kong as it allows him to get attacks in while the opponent is essentially stunned. Yeah. Um, and BKR using full effect of that banana um, and using it to its complete advantage. We're seeing him get up to... Uh, he getting this Incineroar to 103%. And right now, oh, and there it is, the banana into the forward smash. It's a true combo. Absolutely. It's, it's pretty much guaranteed. When we use the word true combo, it's essentially a move that leads into another move that you are guaranteed to get. Um, and those can be absolutely pivotal. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like we're seeing a little bit of lag here, but I think it's starting to level out. Um, but once again, BKR with his Diddy Kong in this really aggressive play style where he... Throws his banana, trying to catch you off guard, using it as a means to halt you, stop you, keep you from getting good stage control, which is a really part of this game. Stage control is how much of the stage is available to you, yeah. um, depending on where you are in the stage, and that can change an entire game. Well, and you also have to think that the main goal of the game is to, one, stay on the stage, and to, two, knock your opponent outside of the invisible boundaries that we were talking about earlier, because that's how you get your KOs and how you take away stocks in order to win the game. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch up on quickly, just for those of you who kind of want to understand the banana aspect of the gameplay, you're going to see a little red arrow in front of the banana. And if you also look, Diddy Kong has a red arrow above him, as where Incineroar is going to have a blue one. That will indicate who has possession of the banana and who will slip on it. So if there's a red arrow, it means that the opponent is going to slip on it. And if there's a blue arrow, it means that you are going to slip on it because it is their banana that they threw. Yes. And usually when you play on a local game, which is when you're playing on your Switch and not over the internet, um, the red player is usually player one and the blue player is player two. And their BKR goes for the banana in the forward smash. As we said, it's a true combo. You're guaranteed to get it. And that forward smash attack is so strong. If you're above 90%, it's pretty much a guaranteed yeah. stock. Um, oh, BKR oh, 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 trying to go for the spike. And for all of you viewers at home, a spike is when you hit someone downward when they're off stage. And spikes are really strong because they can kill at very early percents. It doesn't take a whole lot to kill off of a spike. True. Sure. Um, and there BKR goes with that uh, banana into forward smash. Very, very strong. Trying to get it again, but this Incineroar was able to move out of the way just in time. And the Incineroar capitalizing on the opening against BKR and getting the up smash and taking that stock. But as of right now, BKR playing his banana. But as you saw there, the Incineroar was able to grab the banana for himself, and he threw it back at Diddy Kong, and it tripped him up. And now uh, BKR at 33% and making really good use of the stage control and not getting the stock off of that up smash attack. And BKR going for the side special, which for Diddy Kong, and you jump sideways and latch onto them, and with that banana trip into the forward smash, 
He's going to take that final stock. And there we see BKR showing a really strong performance in this game one. And I believe he still had one, maybe two. Did he have two stocks left? I believe he had one. I think he had one stock there, which is really, really good. That puts Sagu at a pretty strong advantage, um, especially if BKR can take a stock in this next game ahead of this other player. That would be absolutely huge. Um, but right now, Sagu at seven stocks. Wayne State at six stocks. It's a good game. It's, getting, it's close. Yes, it is very close. And Wayne State, honestly, that Incineroar did a really good job. Um, Incineroar has a move where when you try to hit him, this move is kind of in the vein of like a counterattack, but Incineroar's is a little different, where when someone hits him with this move, he kind of becomes like supercharged. And the next type of move that he does will be even more damage and will have more knockback. So what Incineroar can do is Incineroar, when he... when uh, Diddy Kong, when BKR plays Diddy Kong and he's about to throw the banana, this Incineroar can do that charge up move so that when he gets hit by the banana, he doesn't get tripped, but instead he uses it to make himself stronger. And I saw the Incineroar do that quite a lot, and it was really, really well played by him. That move is called Revenge, and it really, a lot of Incineroar's gameplay is revolved around Revenge, because you can also use that in other moves to amplify the power output that they have. So, kind of like using your opportunities to gain revenge and then to also use it, you can really uh, take some stocks at some really low percentages that normally you wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, and it's a very good move, and Incineroar's, as he said, their whole game plan revolves around it, and he... For the, this, for the most part. For the most part. And this player, I don't know if it was Two Week Old Pickle, Egg Two, or Chef Louie, but whoever it was, they did a very, very good job, mm -hmm. and we're playing that really well. Um, but now we're going to get into this second game here. And BKR coming back, and because he ended the last game still with one stock left, he will enter this game with one stock. Correct. And if the other the the player on the other team can take that stock from him without losing a stock, then that next game will be played by the next player of the Sagu Lions versus this player um, on WSC. And WSC will have three stocks. But I think this is possibly Chef Louie. with because we were talking about Chef Louie uh, maybe playing Banjo Kazooie. Right. And um, this character is very interesting. This character is a part of what we talked about last week of downloadable content or DLC, which is a character that you can buy after the normal game that is kind of like an add-on. And this character is from um, another game known as Banjo and Kazooie. And Banjo Kazooie has a really interesting playstyle mm -hmm. um, because Banjo Kazooie doesn't have a whole lot of combos. You kind of just have to. You kind of just have to hit stuff. It's a game of reads. I mean, granted, there are combos like, you know, one or two or three hits that lead into each other. But for the most part, you're kind of just fishing for harder hitting moves that your player or your opponent isn't really going to expect. Yeah, absolutely. And in this game, a read is where you basically read your opponent. Like in a lot of in, in games like chess and, and sports where you're able to predict what your opponent's going to do and that side be not able to kill. And BKR is staying in it just for a little longer. We'll see if he can take a stock before going going down. But yeah, a read is where you basically are able to predict what your opponent is going to do before they do it. And it allows you to usually get a really strong hit in um, in a way that uh, is a huge benefit to, the, to yourself and can possibly even take a stock. But um, right here we're seeing BKR trying to maybe take that stock from uh, Chef Louis. And Chef Louis now having stage control, keeping BKR off stage. But BKR coming back, playing really well, able to keep himself alive and keep his stock going. And if he can take one stock before going out, that would be really huge for the Sagu Lions here. And BKR playing really patient. He's not committing to anything. And getting the forward smash, it's not able to take the stock just yet. But he still has banana, which could be really big. Which could allow him to... Oh, but there's that uh, upward tilt attack. And that thing does... That thing can take a stock at a really low percentage yep. if you can hit it right. The problem with that move, though, is it's got such a small area where it can actually hit you that you have to be really precise with it, which... Chef Louis was very, very precise. That's true. Um, so now we are going into the next match, which it looks like it's going to be Efer. So this is going to be Efer versus who I assume is Chef Louis, and they will each be starting with three stocks because um, unfortunately BKR was not able to take a stock off of Chef Louis in this last matchup.
But um, I'm really hoping to see an absolute dominating performance from Efer. I think this is going to be a good game because, you know, he's just got that switch where he'll have these mm -hmm. games and he, it will just be like, like, y you can't even do anything against his entire game plan. You don't have a second to think or anything. And it's honestly pretty wild to play against. He if puts on a lot of pressure with Luigi. And it, so kind of like knowing where you're going from that or reading where your opponent's going to be moving. I think it's going to be a game of a lot of lateral um, combos and gameplay. Mm, yeah. I, I, I think that for him to be able to get his combo starters, which as I said, you know, these there are very specific moves that can lead into other moves, and there are very specific moves that can start those combo chains. And for Efer, I think his whole game plan is going to revolve around these combo starters. For him, it's his plunger, which allows him to grab the opponent from a range, which can be very, very important. Also, the, his grab plunger has a very special mechanic where it'll pop off and actually have a and it actually hurts the opponent a little bit and can kind of stutter them, which can give you just enough time to get another move or reposition yourself, which can be very important. Um, and this grab plunger combo starter, as well as his up special, which is this huge uppercut that can kill it. Yeah. Really low percentages. I'm hoping that we can see Efer really put in a strong performance here, but we are going to go into this game, this match three of game one. And it looks like they're both playing a pretty heavy neutral. Chef Louis running in with his neutral aerial attack, which is that spinning attack. Very, very strong. And Efer trying to get a foothold, trying to get these combo starters, and there he goes. Ooh. Oh, and hoping to get that up special as we were talking about, but not able to connect it. But right now, Chef Louis at 80%. And unable to... Um, I was about to say unable to get back on stage, but then he does his side B, which is that glowing golden charge attack. Wonderwing. Uh, it's known as Wonderwing, and it's really, really good. It does a bunch of damage, and it's super strong, but you only have a limited amount of uses. And then you cannot use it anymore until you lose a stock and are back at 0%. So as you can see above him, after he does that move, there's a certain amount of golden feathers. And once you get down to zero feathers, you can no longer do that move because it's so strong. Mm -hmm. But here we see both of them at 120%. And both of them are kind of hoping for a really big, strong attack as Chef Louis is able to get with the up smash, taking that stock off of Efer. But Chef Louis at 120%, a lot of things could kill him right now. So all, all Efer has to do is hit one of those moves that can do a lot of damage and and there's that stock. But Chef Louie playing smart, playing patient, sitting on ledge and poking with his, uh, I don't know what they're called, the eggs? Mm -hmm. um, and doing Just a lot of small damage. There you go, Efer trying to get a foothold here, trying to take that stock and even up the, the stocks amongst him and Chef Louie. But Chef Louie's not making it easy. He's creating this wall of projectiles. So it's hard for Efer to get in and close the gap. And he's throwing out these strong attacks, hoping that they will connect, but we're not seeing anything being landed just yet. Getting him up in the air. Oh, and that that wow. um that grenade that he had able to kind of stop Efer from actually getting any kind of follow-up there. And he has used all of his Wonder Wings, so now he can no longer use that move. But Efer taking the stock, that means uh, Chef Louie, Banjo-Kazooie, now has all of his Wonder Wings again. And Efer at 89%. But he gets the grab. He's able to get some of those combos off. Getting Chef Louie at 26. But this is a scary spot for Efer. He's, he doesn't have a lot of wiggle room. And because he has such a limited area of the stage to work with, he's going to have to work really hard to try and not get his yeah. stock taken. But that forward smash covers so much so much area of the stage. And Chef Louie getting the grab off of the, gr off of the bomb. Yeah, after the great drag down that was... Oh! oh. But okay, not able to take the stock. But oh, the 
the up special. You see, there's when he does his up, up special move, there's this little platform that'll appear underneath him. Yeah. And that can actually do damage. And what happened, Efer was trying to get back onto the stage, but because that little platform thing hit him, it stuttered him just long enough to where he fell down and lost the stock. So yep. unfortunately, he was only able to take one stock. And that puts Wayne State at five stocks and Sagu at three. But next up, we have Talo Halo. And if this man can do anything, it's take a whole lot of stocks. It's true. It's true. We call it the Talo Halo 7 for a reason. Yeah, he's done that multiple times. Um, <laughs> taken six, seven. I don't think he's taken eight stocks yet. But one no, day. but there's always room for improvement. There's always know? room for... <laughs> <laughs> he could be better. He could be. He could be so much. Man, better. if only he wasn't so great already. Yeah, if, if only he wasn't just such a phenomenal player that literally does so amazing every game. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine. But Taylor Halo with his Me Sword Fighter coming in this game. We are very very excited because I mean, with him going to local tournaments in the area, with him practicing as much as he does, and I mean, he even said earlier today. He is in the zone. He is. He's, he's got his head in the game, and he's ready to play. He's ready to rock and roll. And I don't know. Uh, me, Sword Fighter, Banjo Kazooie. What does that matchup look like? Uh, honestly, I really don't know. Mm. And here's why: because there's probably five people that play Me, Sword Fighter, and about six people that play Banjo Kazooie, right? Respectively, competitively. Right. Right. So I, uh, I don't see it a lot. Mm. I mean, nobody sees it a lot. Yeah, but. and from what we're looking at right now, they are th these two characters are both so patient, and they spend a lot of time throwing out these projectiles, uh, hoping for these combo starters. So uh, we might be seeing kind of a longer match here, yeah. as these two characters are very dependent on. Loading screen in the corner, and, and this game is barely moving. Um, and we hope this lag can get sorted out before they actually start playing, because, you know, if the lag gets bad enough, the game can become basically unplayable. But, all right, it, it looks like they it were seems able to... to have resolved yeah, itself. It looks like they were able to sort it out. And as of right now, nobody's doing anything. It looks like they're going through some communications with each other, whether or not they want to close out that arena or not to restart. It looks like they are opting to retry and hope for a better connection. Yeah, so um, you'll see this a good bit, especially if there's a lot of lag or latency or a delay between the two um, games playing over the internet or the one game with the two consoles playing over the right. internet is that if the game that they had made for some reason wasn't on a good um, wasn't on a good connection then they will start a new game and hope that maybe it's a little better but as we can see here um, because the Banjo-Kazooie lost one stock in the last game. He will have to reset himself down to two stocks. And as we can see, it's much, looking much better. so much better, so much cleaner. And as they taunt, they are going to get into this game. And Talo playing a very patient play style. And Banjo-Kazooie has a lot to work with. He has a lot of utility because he can shoot out these little grenades and hold them. And if you run up to him and try to hit him while he's holding one, then you will end up getting hit and it can stop any ch attempt at a combo or um, some move that you were trying to do. But Talo showing a really strong performance right now. He's holding really great stage control because Banjo and Kazooie is so far towards the edge and Talo is more towards the middle. He has a lot of, this, of the stage that he can work with and that limits Chef Louie's options. But Chef Louie opting for the side B Wonder Wing to try and get some damage in. Both of them are throwing out a lot of projectiles. And it, this looks to be like a pretty even game. They are both playing really, really well. And both playing their play styles really well. Taylor, or Taylor Halo, getting a, um, a strong chain of projectiles and him getting That'll the tornado into the upward aerial attack, which for me, Sword Fighter is one of the few moves that can consistently take stocks in a, in a certain range. Because yep. you, you have the you know opportunity where they get hit by that tornado at a certain percent, and it just sends them in the right perfect place to get hit by that up air, but the up air will kill. Absolutely. And there you see it again. So me, Sword Fighter, one of his moves that he can throw out, that giant tornado, um, 
for the most part, it has a set knockback to where even if you go up to a higher percentage, where most moves, if you're at a higher percentage, you will get thrown back farther. But this tornado move has a pretty consistent knockback. So at certain percentages, because of how and where it shoots you upward, um, me Swordfighter is able to get an upward aerial attack, which um, at around 80 to 100 percent, 80 to 110, maybe yeah. if you're lucky, um, can take the stock and net you that win. But it looks like Talo Halo trying to hold on to that stock if he could, but Chef Louie, a really good player. And Talo not getting the strong hit on his up air there. And Chef Louis playing really patient, trying to shoot out these projectiles as best he can, try and not give up this remaining stock, and hopefully take another stock of his own, but Taylor Halo not making it easy. But there's that last Wonder Wing. And so now his options are a lot more limited because that is one of Banjo and Banjo Kazooie's best moves, honestly. Yeah. And since he has now run out, but getting a good grenade there. Trying to come back to stage, and oh, oh, Halo Halo with that backward aerial attack able to take that stock. And so we're going to go into this final uh, match of this game where we're seeing Wayne State with three stocks, their last player, versus Taylor Halo with two. Two. And we'll see how this goes. I thought Taylor did great. Yeah. Um, both playing very, very patient. I think that um, Chef Louie on his banjo kazooie is really strong. He's able to kind of keep the pressure on you from afar so he remains safe at a distance while you keep taking damage. But also, that is Halo Halo's that's essential like, yeah, game plan. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah. It was a game of constant pressure and trying to move around those hitboxes. And another thing that I think we um, have yet to see in the competition so far is Halo Halo using a me sword fighter with the reflector. Mm. And that really, um, in a couple instances, at least in an early game, really kind of turned the tides and hit his advantage because he was able to completely reverse all of the grenade, grenade throws that Chef Louis was, was to throw out. And, mm. um, yeah, kind of picked up the pace for him. Yeah, absolutely. And hopping into this final final match, I really think Taylor Halo, being as consistent as he is, as strong as he is, I mean, just that last time, he was able to take two whole stocks off of Chef Louis, mm -hmm. who was a really good player, and him only losing one. And I'm hoping to see a really strong performance from Taylor Halo, but I don't know. We could see a W WSC player. I don't know if it's um, I don't know if it's pickle or egg. Um, but a egg two specifically. Egg two. Don't don't get confused. Yeah. Um, but seeing one of them, we we could see one of them just have a really strong performance and know this me sword fighter matchup, which is not common, but it happens. It does happen. Um, because there aren't a lot of people that play me sword fighter, but I mean. There are some people that have enough experience to where they just know the matchup like the back of their hand. And that's something you always have to worry about because you never know the kind of matchups that the that your opponent has played in. And even if they have, you know, even if they have all this experience, maybe they don't have it in a certain area. Maybe they have an excess in this one specific matchup. You never know. It's true. You never, never know. But we are about to get into this match. It looks like they are still talking, talking it over with the other team about you know, what stage they're going to pick and just different little detail stuff before we get into this game. Um, well, that's another thing to consider within, like, character matchups. There's also character stage matchups. So we've already said that there's eight legal stages, and each player is going to, or their character is going to do better on a certain set of stages against a certain set of characters. So stage bans are, like, pivotal, Three, two, one, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I think they're really, really important. And, oh, we're seeing the Terry. I think this is Chef Louie. This might oh, there be. there we go. Yeah, Chef Louie being one of the best Terry players out there, aside from, you know, some professionals. Um, riddles. Riddles, to name one. But um, but the thing about Halo Halo is he knows this matchup really well, and he's got a really solid game plan. As we can see here, Chef Louie's at 90% already, and Halo almost taking the stock there, but... Chef Louie with his go. The thing about Terry is once he reaches 100%, he has what's known as his um, his go. And yeah. it basically supercharges a lot of his attacks to doing more damage. Like that, Power Geyser. And right now, Taylor, from that one attack, went from about 30% to 68 but it wasn't enough. Taylor Halo getting that backward aerial attack and taking the stock off of Chef Louie. 
And we'll see if Chef Louis is able to close out. If he's able to close out this this game. But right now they're both at two stocks. And if Taylor can take that, oh, Taylor going down to one last stock. We'll see if he he's got to take the next two off of Chef Louis, off of Wayne State, if they want to win this game in this best of three. Taylor throwing out projectiles. Really solid game plan. Chef Louis playing patient, holding out his shield. And as we talked about uh, last week, the shield is the little bubble that prevents you from getting hit by uh, attacks. And the one thing that can beat the shield, I guess, is if you run up and you crab, which is one of the moves that you can do. Correct? But Halo Halo playing the ledge really well. Throwing out his tornadoes, throwing out his uh, chakrams, which is that little disc projectile. Both of which are very good, very strong. Getting a lot of mileage out of these projectiles and hoping to get one of these combo starters, as we had talked about earlier. And that was almost enough to take the stock, but it wasn't enough. Halo Halo getting him to 134%. But Chef Louie holding on to that stock for dear life. But there it is, the, that up smash. the up smash after the parry. The cool thing about your shield is there's something you can do that's known as a parry, where if you let go of the shield within, I believe it's... I don't remember how many frames, but if you let go of your shield within a very, very quick response, like a very, very quick amount of time after the move connects, you do what's known as a parry, and it lets you do an attack a lot quicker than your opponent. And Chef Louis trying to take this last stock off of Taylor Halo, but Taylor Halo not giving it up, getting Chef Louis up to kill percent, both of which could die from anything at this point right now. Oh. And Chef Louis not being able to connect that final hit of his combo. And we'll see whoever is able to hit this. And Taylor Halo going for the grab. It's not able Ooh. to take the stock. Chef Louis trying to recover. Taylor playing the stage. This is a very good spot for Taylor to be in. And opting to go for the forward tilt and not connecting. Chef Louis trying to get some of these combo starters. The power geyser not connecting. And with Chef Louis' go, this is very scary for both players. Taylo Halo at 182%. But now Taylo Halo has stage control. And oh no. Oh no, that is unfortunate. It really is. That Man. was known as an SD or a self-destruct. My and, heart. Yeah, that was pounding. very tense. Oh man, Taylor Halo at 182%. That's crazy. And him not being, and, and Chef Louis just not able to take that stock. Taylor played that final stock so well. He was being super patient. Close to immaculate. Yeah, like, like. There, were, there the, were a couple instances where Chef Louis definitely outplayed Taylor. Yeah. But Taylor was able to recover from that in a way that he wasn't able to get hit by any kill options. And he was able to run away and throw something out, which is you know, an optimized way to play this game. Yeah, absolutely. And Taylor Halo sticking to his game plan, playing patient, playing back, throwing out projectiles, hoping for these combo starters. He does so well. And for Chef Louis, that unfortunate SD, that's going to cost him. They, that yeah. means they lost that game one. And now going into game two, Sagu has a 1-0 lead. And this is a best of three, as I did not mention before, and but did mention <laughs> before. Um, this is a best of three. So for a team to win two games, they win. Yep. And now Sagu only has to win one more game. If they can do that, that's this week win. And so we're going to see if Sagu is able to pull off this second game or if we're going to go to a game three. It's going to take a lot for um, Wayne State. They last semester were the reigning national champions. And it's true. for Sagu to get a win here, that would be huge. That's huge. Yeah. And especially since it, it's uh, the run back game, you know, because we... We came second last season, so to to beat them now this early in the season, that's huge for Sagu Lions. Yeah, it's, it would be a really big win. This would be a huge boost of momentum, huge boost for morale, just to really solidify all the work they've put on up until this point, because they've put in a lot of work. I it's think true. that they can do it. I know they can do it. They deserve the win, but Wayne State, they're not an easy opponent. To overcome the state championship, you know, the state champions, that's like... 
That's a big deal. That's a big deal. All right, and we are going to hop into this game one. It looks like uh, both teams are opting to start who played second last time. So here we've got... I, I don't believe this is Chef Louie. I don't know who this is, but... Um, them having a Banjo and Kazooie player, and then up for the Sagu Lions, Efer starting out. Very strong start. Um, Efer playing, having played really well against this Banjo Kazooie last time. Both playing patient, and there's that Wonder Wing doing a lot of damage. And is pretty safe, all things considered, if you time it right. It's true. Because it carries you so far. But. It has so much killing potential and power, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can take stocks pretty early. But both players playing a pretty aggressive game. For the most part, they've been in each other's face basically this whole time. Yeah. Um, and uh, this uh, Banjo-Kazooie opting to go for a forward smash and not connecting. And Efer getting a good combo. Going for the, the down special, that uh, Tornado from Luigi, and right now we're seeing a pretty even game. And if Efer can take this stock, or if this Banjo-Kazooie can take the stock, we'll see a pretty pretty present and beneficial advantage here. But both players now playing a little bit more cautious, going for the Wonder Wing. Luckily it was able to connect. But Efer now being pressured on towards ledge, getting a misfire. Oh, but, but that misfire hit the egg, and the egg stopped his forward momentum. Wow. It's amazing how even such a small move like that egg can really stop you from getting getting back and, and recovering properly. But Efer getting good ledge pressure, hoping to take the stock. Not enough. Banjo Kazooie only has one Wonder Wing left. And we'll see if they'll if they're able to use it before Efer can take the stock from them. But this Banjo Kazooie player is playing really, really strong. They're getting a lot of these combos that they need. Is able to disrupt Efer's game plan, and we'll see if he can take this first stock off of this Banjo Kazooie player. And there he goes, getting good stage control, pressuring him, pressuring the Banjo Kazooie towards ledge. Was a great spot for Luigi, except man. Banjo Kazooie with all these projectiles, it can be hard for him to, to kind navigate. Of, yeah, to navigate that to get some clear momentum. And Efer doing everything in his power to try and take this first stock. This Banjo Kazooie playing really, really well, pressuring as best he can. And we'll see if they are able to maybe take the stock from Efer before he can take it from the Banjo Kazooie. And going for the dash oh. attack, and it's able to kill. He was at what, 144%? Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty good percentage for a stock, but now it's reset his Wonder Wing. He's got all five back, and that's scary for Efer as he gets forward smashed at ledge, dying at 100%. That Banjo Kazooie forward smash is really strong. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, now this, this Banjo Kazooie, a whole stock ahead, but that's the thing about Luigi. He just needs one combo, and we're back up and to a 1 1. It's true. So we'll see if he can get these combo starters. There he goes with the grab, trying to go for the aerials. They're not connecting. These aerial attacks are really strong. An aerial attack is basically an attack you do in the air. And Luigi's aerial attacks are very, very strong. It's one of uh, the, the four that he has are his, some of his four strongest moves out of the 27 basic moves he has available to him. But this Banjo-Kazooie not giving him a chance to breathe. Playing really strong, but Efer getting a good shield against that Wonder Wing. See, the thing about Wonder Wing is it has really good knockback and kill potential, but it doesn't do a whole lot against shield. So if you can shield against the Wonder Wing, you're in a pretty good spot. You're, yeah, it, you're pretty safe from it. But again, if it hits you, that's big damage and that's big knockback. Yes, and depending on the percentage, your stock is basically gone. But hoping for the Wonder Wing kill oh. and the forward smash not connecting. That was very, very close. Efer having a chance here. Gray Shield not able to get the up smash or up B. And getting the Cyclone, I believe it's called. That down B. And now Efer's in a good spot to try and maybe punish and, and get a stock, get that second stock off of this Banjo Kazooie. Looks like he's but, trying to play it safe. Oh, here. and there he goes. Not. Not losing the stock just yet. This Banjo Kazooie playing ledge really well. And Efer 
doing everything he can to recover. Yeah. And there it is, the Banjo-Kazooie up smash attack. Really strong. Banjo-Kazooie, when he grabs you, one of his moves is that he can push you into the ground and you're buried and you have to do what's known as mashing, where you spam as many buttons as you can to try and get out before they hit you. Now, Banjo-Kazooie has that kick, that upward kick, mm -hmm. and that in like the middle earlier percentages usually can be really strong, but once you get to the later percentage, an up smash is more than enough to take the stock, and that's what we saw happen. Yeah. So right now, Sagu down to six stocks. Wayne State only at eight. They've got a little bit of work cut out for them. We'll see if BKR and Taylor Halo can um, kind of make up the difference because Efer did really, really good, but it just wasn't enough. He wasn't it's hard, able. Yeah. It's really hard against that Banjo and Kazooie because there's so many projectiles. He has so much available to him to keep you away and it can be hard to close the gap and get these combos they need well also luigi's not you know the fastest character so it's really hard to try to maneuver around the stage and yeah. granted it is possible but it's just very very difficult to do so yeah yeah he's not super fast he's fast enough he's sure not, he's sure, not sure, super sure. fast he's not really quick his fastest things are probably his aerials um and if he can get a misfire which the one he did get was unfortunately shut out by the egg, yeah. which is very unfortunate. But which, it might have also killed him because he might have gotten stuck under stage, but mm. I've seen Efer come back from worse misfires. Yes, yes. Efer usually does pretty good at, at making the misfire valuable and worth it, but that was just a lose-lose situation yep. no matter what. Just unfortunate. But we're going to go into the second match. We've got BKR versus this Banjo and Kazooie, and we're going to see if BKR can reset these stocks and... Maybe put Sagu in a lead if he can. Mm -hmm. It's Banjo Kazooie going down to two stocks, and we're getting into this game. It's Banjo Kazooie opting for a really aggressive start, going for these neutral aerials, but BKR getting a good banana and using his side B kick. It's known as Monkey Flip, the one where he jumps towards them very quickly. That move right there. And BKR uses it very well. It's one of Diddy Kong's strongest moves because it's quick, it's fast, it does damage, it can grab you. It's versatile, yeah. It's, it's very, very versatile. And it's got a lot of uses. But going for the banana there and getting a good 75% of the start. Really good for BKR. Great place to be in. And this Banjo-Kazooie using the Wonder Wing to reposition himself, which I assume was the strategy there going back to a place where he can pressure from a distance, but that's the thing about Diddy Kong, is Diddy Kong can run in with that monkey flip, and after that fourth smash, not able to get the stock. But BKR needing just one more move, one more good smash attack to take the stock and bring him down to one remaining. We'll see if he's able to take it while keeping a decent amount of percentage for himself. BKR playing really well here, avoiding these projectiles. And getting that banana forward smash we talked about. It's the signature combo. Very, very strong. Now BKR getting some good combo strings. Great use of shield too. Absolutely. BKR knows how to shield, when to shield, how long to shield. He's very good at stuff like that. See, these Super Smash Bros. players, they have so many things they're thinking about. Yeah. They're thinking about all of their moves and all of their options. They're thinking about all the opponent's moves and all the opponent's options and all the little nuances that can play into just every single possible interaction. At high level, Smash Bros. becomes a mind game. Uh, it, it becomes a game of think and input. Absolutely, and man, that Banjo-Kazooie getting the Wonder Wing kill off on BKR, and we'll see if he's able to take this remaining stock without losing another one. Because for him to enter into this l next game with two stocks would be pretty good. Huge. It'd be he, huge. He brings back that from a two stock deficit to a one stock deficit, which is much more manageable. But this Banjo Kazooie not making it easy, creating this wall of projectiles that Diddy Kong, that BKR has to kind of sift through. And it's making it very difficult for him to close the gap and get a. Get back what great into the Smash Bros. gameplay. If yeah, I might just, add. yeah, just just two characters throwing out peanuts and eggs, and you know, welcome to Super Smash Bros. I Brothers. wonder if this is Egg Two. Oh, this might be Egg Two, considering he uses eggs, eggs. as Banjo yeah. Kazooie. I wouldn't be surprised. Still wondering about the Egg One though. Yeah. 
These two are... Uh, Banjo-Kazooie trying to go for that Wonder Wing, but BKR hitting him out of it, getting the banana, but luckily the grenade saved him there. But BKR having stage control, a very good position for BKR. And shielding the Wonder Wing, getting the forward smash. Is it able to take the stock? It is not. Banjo-Kazooie staying in it, doing everything in his power to not lose his remaining stock. And BKR is trying to go for these smash attacks, which do a lot of damage. Maybe going to go for a banana, and there you see it. Hopefully this, this banana will be able to take this stock, and... BKR coming back on stage. Oh, Banjo-Kazooie going for the grab, and BKR with the perfect oh. spacing! Able to sit exactly where he needed to be so that when Wonder Wing finished, he was right there for a forward <laughs> smash, taking the stock. Great job, BKR. That was a wonderful job. These, the Smash guys are making my heart just... <laughs> it's stressful. It's, it's, it is I'm, a very I'm tense game. I'm not even playing right now, and I'm stressed out. Yeah, this is a very, very tense game, but BKR, absolutely dominating performance. It's he true. did such a good job. And now we're going to go into this next game with only a one-stock deficit. He brought it back, and hopefully the ideal goal is to go to allow Taylo to go into this next game either with an even stock or even a lead. Mm -hmm. So that if maybe BKR going into another game with a stock left, that would be huge. It would. That would give Sagu a huge advantage and would give Taylo a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of breathing room, so that when he goes in the final match, he can just give it everything he's got. It's true. But we'll see what he's able to pull off. Right now we've got, um, I believe their other two players were an Incineroar and a Terry. The Incineroar is going to be very interesting. I assume they're going to pull out the Incineroar next. That would be my assumption. I would assume. Um, just because uh, Chef Louie on that Terry is such a strong anchor, and he really helps create this foundational um, just powerhouse yeah, for yeah, their yeah. team. Well, also, it's it's Terry is a wonderful Wi-Fi character. Oh, yeah. Just because... So a lot of characters can't deal with the um, kind of like the little bit of latency. Hmm. Terry just does. Yeah, no problem. Because a lot of his moves either linger long enough, mm -hmm. or they're safe enough at a distance, or you're only getting one move anyways, and it just hits like a truck. Mm -hmm. So it either hits or it doesn't. Yep. So, And that's the thing about Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong is a very combo-heavy character, so if this lag starts to kind of spike up, it could spell some trouble. It, yeah, it hurts because, again, the I mean, Terry is also a very precision-based character, but Terry has a little bit longer of hitboxes, a little bit more options, um, I personally think, than Diddy Kong. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And and with all these different moves, all the different stages, each of these players on their respective characters have so many things they're thinking about. And, you know, this is basically a giant game of rock, paper, scissors. What we're looking at here is what I like to call five-dimensional chess. Okay. You've got so many moving pieces. You've got so many things that everyone can do. But really, it comes down to options. It comes down to choices. Is this person going to do this? Well, if they're going to do this one move in this one spot, then I want to do this other move in this specific spot to try and capitalize on the fact that they're doing their move. And, I mean, that's a pretty standard, like, game concept. But here, because there's so many things that people are thinking about, it's just at such a high level that it's out of this world. So, like, rock, paper, scissors, but, like... Way crazier and way faster. What, it's so much faster. I like the analogy. And, yeah, and there's cartoon characters, and there's bananas and eggs, and it's it's a good time. And guys from fighting games. Yeah, and it's wonderful. And this is this is what Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is: is a monkey with a banana beating up a fire Pokemon, Pokemon lion tiger thing. Um, <laughs> It's absolutely wonderful. So we're gonna get into this next game. Uh, BKR going back down to two stocks. And right now, him starting with a one-stock deficit, that is very much manageable for BKR. Um, and also, Incineroar is a matchup that um, he can handle very well. Um, Incineroar, if he's able to close the gap and get these really strong hits, like that up special we see, that spinning attack, that can That's be really B. strong. Oh, is that neutral B? It is. Okay. Um, him getting that neutral B can be very, very strong. Um, and we'll see if uh, which game plan is the one that can take this game here, but BKR doing very good to kind of keep him at a distance with this banana. Playing around the banana very, very well. And shooting out a few peanuts here and there. Uh, I feel like peanut is a very underused move by Pop Diddy Kong's. Pop Gun is a really good conditioning move. So, 
think of it how Banjo has the the eggs that he shoots out. It's like, hey, try not to go here. It's not going to be the worst thing in the world if it hits you, but also it's going to disrupt what you're doing in your game plan. Pop Gun's kind of the same way. Hmm. Absolutely. And BKR using that to its full advantage. And right now, him trying to go for the up smash and not connecting, but wow, the spacing to avoid that side B from the Incineroar, mm -hmm. literally, it was... It was pixels away. Yeah. Pixels away. And now we see it is back down to two stocks and two stocks. And right there, BKR has just reset the game and has even put Sagu in an advantage, putting the Incineroar at 60%. And it's go it just keeps going up. BKR playing out of his mind right now. BKR is a menace. What can I say? Yeah, he is such a good player. He's so consistent. But as we were talking about, there's that revenge. The Incineroar capitalizing on that banana. And look at that. After one hit, now uh, uh, BKR's Diddy Kong went from around 40% to 90%. Yep. Using the revenge to charge up that move. Very, very dangerous. But BKR still playing strong. Using the banana. Not afraid to go in and get these combos as best he can. And now in a very good position. And getting the forward smash from the banana. And as we're seeing, now he's ahead of stock. Yep. And BKR just so good, so consistent, knowing his game plan and being able to execute it to essential perfection. And him, if he's able... Oh, and there it is. The up smash comes out. The up smash attack from the Incineroar, very strong, able to take that stock off of BKR. And this, whoever can get the next stock will really um, determine how the end of this game goes because that will give an advantage to one team. Oh. And no, as we talked about last week, this is what we call pineappling. It is so sad. It is a reference to an older Super Smash Brothers game that looked, uh, one of the stages looked like a pineapple. And a lot of players would get stuck underneath the stage and weren't able to recover. It was a consistent problem, so it got coined in the community. And now it's yeah, and, and this is what we see here, that this Incineroar being uh, too far underneath the stage, he wasn't able to go around and actually grab the ledge, which is what you want to grab to recover and get back on, because um, there's a specific grabbing ledge animation. Yeah. Um, but him getting stuck underneath the stage, losing the stock, that means Sagu, BKR, going into this next game. They're a stock up. Going from a two-stock deficit to a one-stock lead, BKR, absolute MVP. Yeah. Playing out of his mind, did such a good job against the Banjo-Kazooie and against the Incineroar. Just very well done. He is such a good player. Personally, I'm really excited to see the Diddy Kong-Terry matchup. I, I really am, because that's going to be a lot of really fast, action-packed gameplay and spacing and just I, I'm, I'm very excited. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. You are watching the Sagu Sports Network, the Sagu Lions against Wayne State College. And we are down to uh, four stocks at Sagu, three stocks at Wayne State. Sagu leads one game to zero and this is a best of three. So if they can find a way to close out these last three stocks against this Terry, that's game. Mm -hmm. And they are a fit. They continue their undefeated streak going to three and oh in the ECAC Super Smash Bros. West Division, I believe, as it's referred to. Mm -hmm. Sagu winning this game turns the tides of how the competition has been run for the past year. Yeah. Because Wayne State has been an undefeated... or So Wayne State and uh, Illinois Westland have both been just these undefeated powerhouses. And we're, we're running it back. Mm. Absolutely. We are showing up, giving it our best, and saying, hey, there's another big dog in the ring, and... Don't underestimate me, Sword Fighter. And it's or in Diddy Kong. And it's in Waxahachie, Texas, of all places. But we're going to go into this next game, this next uh, match with BKR. He's going to reset down to one stock. And we're going to see his. And so BKR's game plan right now take a stock. Mm. If he can get even just one stock, that'll put Taylor Halo up a stock in this next match, which would be absolutely huge. Yeah. And. Diddy Kong can show a really strong performance against Terry, but Chef Louie not giving him much room to breathe, playing really well, playing Banana very smart, and not letting that Banana get the better of him, but BKR not giving up without a fight. And pressuring him as much as he can close to the ledge. And the Banana disrupting his kick flip. I believe it's called kick flip. Um, the Terry where he does the like arced kick. It's like a reverse side B, yeah. 
But BKR in a really good position. Gaining stage control, forcing Chef Louis into a defensive position and is able to get him to 91%, which for Diddy for a Diddy Kong forward smash at ledge, that's definitely kill percent. Yep. But Chef Louis, oh, with that up special. Not only that, but the input up special. You go, there's a whole other, instead of just doing up B, you go down, up, B, A, whole thing. Yeah, the Changes thing about the Terry, boxes. because he came from another fighting game, a lot of these characters that come from previous fighting games actually keep a lot of their super move button input heavy, like... Controls. Controls. Yeah. And so that's, you know, every character has the basic 27 moves, but some of them have up to close to 40, close to 50. Like, it gets crazy, especially yep. for some of these characters that come from previous fighting games. And Terry is one of them. And so he's got very special inputs that if you do this specific combo, it'll do either like a mix-up move or an over, like a really strong move. And that was one of them, that, that spin kick up special input. Very strong, kills really early if you can hit it. And wow, Chef Louie doing a great job. And now we're getting into the final game, three stocks apiece. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is the showdown. If, if Taylor Halo can close out this, this last game, then we're looking at... A 2-0 Sagu lead. And so we will see once we get into this next game. All right, and getting into this next game, one of the cool things about me Sword Fighter and a lot of the me characters is they get to pick what what moves they go into a game with, and they get to kind of pick and choose their specials. And because that, um, because of the scenario that was presented with them this last time, um, Taylor Halo was able to go into this game with an optimal move set. And before, in the last time we saw him play, he was using. Oh, okay. I, I, I was oh. going to comment on that because last game we saw him use Reflector to combat that uh, Banjo Kazooie, but as we see, he hasn't changed that to his you know quick power thrust input. He's keeping it just to deal with the Terry neutral B. Yeah, and I think that's pretty smart. I think that's a good move, and I think that'll help him kind of have control over neutral. Um, like we're seeing here, him um, getting uh, Chef Louis off stage. And Chef Louie getting him to 100%, but not able to take the stock. And Taylor Halo playing a really patient game, not not getting overzealous, but again that input. Oh, almost taking the stock and not being enough. And Taylor being pressured at ledge, but doing his best to get out of that situation and opting for a tornado, not able to get it. And Chef Louie barely getting barely that stock. Getting and now. Chef Louie ahead of stock at 50%. This is a very good position for him to be in. And we're going to see if Taylor can close out this game and get some kind of a lead against uh, Wayne State. As we're seeing, Taylor playing smart, playing safe, trying to go for these, these projectiles, these tornadoes. Essentially what we're seeing here, Evan, is what happened last time with Taylor being down one, but still able to make a comeback. So will we see it again is the question. I think, I hope we will. Honestly, Taylor Halo's clutch factor is out of this world. It's true. Anytime he's in a deficit, it doesn't feel like he's in a deficit. But, oh, Buster Hulk just, wow, doing so much damage. And that's the thing about Terry's go meter is that it gives you moves like that that are just so strong and kill so early. And Taylor Halo down to one stock. And we'll see if he's able to take these remaining stocks off of Chef Louie. But Chef Louie wow. get in one combo, getting him to 75%. And pressuring him at ledge. Chef Louie in a really optimal position, almost getting the power geyser, not enough. Halo Halo grabbing ledge just in time, regaining stage control. And Terry trying to go for the power geyser and not connecting. But, oh, and there it is. Input. <sighs> Chef Louie, just an absolute destructive performance.
And ladies and gentlemen, it is tied one to one. We are going to a game three. Wow, kind of, kind of understandable though. I, I understand where um, both teams are kind of sitting, and again, maybe it depended on the matchups that they were running. Because you know, but granted that we both teams had moved a player around, but those same players played each other just in a different order. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm again intrigued to see what. Sagu chooses to do with their player lineup. Next. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm just as intrigued to see what Wayne State chooses to do. Mm -hmm. Because if Wayne State chooses to switch up their their order, I don't know. I, I thought what they honestly I thought what they did the last game was really good. I think starting with the Banjo Kazooie, getting a pretty solid lead, he he was a great starter. He got them that two stock lead. Right. And then having the Incineroar in the middle, trying to do his best, take as many stocks as he can. And then, I mean, honestly, Chef Louis on Terry as an anchor is just absolutely amazing. It's scary, yeah. It is very scary, and it's such a good job. But we're going to see how this game three comes up. And here we are seeing Efer. Uh-oh. He's hovering over Young Link. He's been, he's been dabbling recently. Oh, I'm very excited. I have yet to see his Young Link really? in a competitive match. Oh, but there he goes for Luigi, <laughs> yep. which is understandable. Yep. His Luigi has that pop-off potential, and I really hope we can see that You know what that game. conversation was? Hmm. He hovered over it, and I can hear BKR in the background going, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just kind of stands, because the screen, and okay. Well, here's the thing. Efer eats Incineroar. Mm. Or at least he has in the past with different Incineroars. This Incineroar is very, very good. Yeah, so very good. It might, it might be even, but if we see anything, I'd love to see Efer face against the Incineroar. I really would. Yeah, that would be very, very cool. And that would, I think, would be the best chance for Sagu to have a lead. Where Efer against the Incineroar, BKR did great against the Banjo-Kazooie and against the Incineroar. Mm. So whatever matchup that lines up against, I think it's BKR's advantage. And then BKR doing as much as he can against the Terry. It was unfortunate that he couldn't get a stock against the Terry, which I think would have been really, really good for Talo. Yeah. But we will see what they can do. And I'm um, I'm hoping that they can, you know, give it all they got and clutch out this game three. And, and as we're waiting for this game, as we're waiting for them to, um, you know, go into this next match... When when you think of player characters, okay, and characters that you have played, what would you say is a very fun character to play? Uh, a oh, character that's just a fun character, yeah, fun, something that where you're just sitting around with your friends and and it's just a good time. I mean, Captain Falcon comes to mind. Captain Falcon is very fun. And then you're probably gonna disagree with me on this. They're gonna say King K. Rule, aren't you? King K. Rule is also a great, <laughs> <Okay>. great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun character because yes. you can hit some crazy stuff. Yep. I was going to say Hero. Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> I was I waiting for that though. one. I was waiting for that. Me personally, Donkey Kong. Donkey all day. Kong's always Donkey fun. Kong is so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. But we are going to Yes. Get, yeah, okay. As you said, this, this Incineroar starting for Wayne State, and we might see a really dominant performance by Efer. And Efer starting out strong, trying to go for these grabs. Oh, getting these really good grabs and, and conversions. Wow. Two grabs in a row. Very good. And he's able to pressure this Incineroar just nonstop because now he doesn't have to worry about all those projectiles and him getting the plunger. This is a huge, this is, this is huge. Really good by Efer. I guess Efer's just playing games where up bees get interrupted by weird little moves. Yeah. Yeah, because we saw that with the with the misfire earlier, and now with the plunger. Yeah, yeah. Oh Ever, my goodness! And we are oh, oh my goodness. almost getting the up special. That probably would have been the stock if he had been able to get that. But now, Efer a whole stock ahead, even percent. This is a really good spot to be in. Oh, trying to go for the ice special, not able to connect it. <laughs> and we're gonna see if he's able to get back on stage safely. Avoids the up smash. That was really good by Keeper. Yeah. Great timing. And the side B interrupting the grab, which I don't know what the priority is on that. I mean, it's a command grab, so it has priority over most things. Efer getting stage control in a really good position. 
But that Incineroar getting a side oh, B and not goodness. taking the stock. Efer stays up. Hangs onto his stock for dear life. But the Incineroar getting the up smash. But at least it traded. At least the Incineroar yeah. took some damage from Yeah, it. he did. And now Efer getting the Incineroar to 142%. And oh, oh, going the wrong way. That That's is unfortunate. so unfortunate. And opting for the neutral B. Ooh. Great spot dodge by the Incineroar to avoid that plunger grab. And this Incineroar not going down without a fight. But Efer getting these really good uh, and that combos. Yeah, doing a great job at keeping his distance. Not getting hit by a lot of these moves. And getting him off stage. And oh <laughs> no, that is so unfortunate. Not a third time. Three SDs. Oh, no. oh man, you hate to see it. I mean, you hate to see it when it happens once. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's unfortunate. And that's one of the problems with Incineroar is that his recovery is so like risky. It's so dangerous. Yeah, I think the word that I like to use for it is it's a very fickle move mm. in the sense of, like, conditions have to be perfect. Mm. But when they're perfect, it does work. Yeah. And it does great damage. I mean, I think it can even kill at, like, 20%. Yeah. Um, that's, again, probably not going to happen in a competitive match. Probably not. But it has, it has happened before. I've seen it. Mm. Yeah. But unfortunate. But that is huge for Sagu. Yeah. That means that Efer is going to go into this second game with Sagu still at eight stocks and Wayne State at six. And this is a reverse of what we saw last game. Now Sagu is the one that's up two stocks yeah. on Wayne State. And we'll see if Efer can take a stock or two in this next game. If he can take a stock or two against this banjo, that'd be really big. The thing is, though, it's a good banjo and kazooie. It is a very good banjo. Very good banjo and kazooie. Um, and so we're going to see if he's able to pull that off. Honestly, Talk about game plan. Okay. What's Efer going to do in this? There's lots of projectiles, lots Ooh. of things he has to deal with. What's movement. he got to do to win? I movement? Mean, movement and then getting in those those grabs so he can start his combos to add on the damage and, you know, eventually either try and hit that up B, which will kill uh, at very early percents, or trying to, you know, fish for back airs or maybe spikes. or it, It's kind of just a, this is a game of stage control. Mm. Absolutely. Stage control, where you are on stage, what you're doing, where you're at, how many options you have, all these things, very, very important. And we're going to get into this next game. Efer's going to uh, reset himself down to two stocks. And then we are going to get into this with uh, it being Kalos. I think that's Luigi favored. I think it's favored for both of them because it gives Banjo the area to use that Wonder Wing effectively to be able to throw his projectiles around and to also stay on those two plats to try and throw those eggs. Absolutely, and Banjo-Kazooie doing a really good job at getting these these eggs into Wonder Wing, but Efer getting the grabs he wants. This is very good, pressuring him off stage, doing a very good job at kind of keeping him at bay. And... Efer doing his best to avoid all these little projectiles, but as you can see, these eggs that Banjo-Kazooie keeps throwing out, that's a lot to deal with, and it can be hard to close in and actually get these, these moves that he needs. It but, harshes the approach. Mm, absolutely. And it, and it kind of creates this sense of, of wariness and caution where you don't want to approach yeah. because you feel like your options are being... You, you feel like you're being choked. But Efer doing really good. Keeping himself in, getting good aerials, getting him to high percents, and we'll see if he can take this stock. And and this Banjo Kazooie getting two pummels, which is where you no not pummels uh berries berries yep um where you essentially bury them into the ground, getting two in a row that was huge for the Banjo Kazooie. But Efer having stage control, this is really good. He's in a great position. Trying to go for the back air, not connecting. Getting a parry, but the grenade is going to be able to stall that. that uh, oh, and the forward smash coming out. Great forward smash by Efer. Doing a really good job at keeping the game as even as possible. Still, and that keeps Sagu with a two-stock lead. Very, very good. And now, we'll the real question is, can he hit that Luigi zero to death? I want to see it. After he gets that plunger grab, Oh no, him. 
It's uh, hard. It's hard to get back to stage when Banjo's constantly throwing out little hitboxes that interrupt you. Oh, from that is away. such a good option. It is. Like, wow. And with that, Wayne State bringing it back down. I mean, this is literally verbatim of what we're, we saw just reversed. And honestly, I wouldn't mind a complete reverse of last game. Yep. Meaning Sagu would take game three. That'd be great. But we'll, we will see because, um, you know, it's very easy. Yes, Banjo Kazooie, very good. Terry, really strong. But BKR, he's got one mean Diddy Kong. It's very true. He's got one mean consistent. He's got a great game plan. He knows how to play around the projectiles. I, you know, if you watch him play, yeah. he does a really good job at avoiding them just at the right time to get in, throw a banana, and getting some kind of conversion and a bunch of damage. And and these combo starters, these these follow up moves that Banjo and 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 both Banjo and Diddy Kong are looking for. I don't know. I think BKR can kind of see through the cracks in his game plan. And I, I watched him, and his ability to kind of read his opponent is really good. Some things that I would love to see from BKR City Kong is using both Banana and the grenade that Banjo is going to output. Mm. Because, you know, they're both grabbable items, and they're both, uh, in my opinion, items characters. So they both players are going to have to know how to navigate um, either not getting hit by an explosion or slipping on a banana, as funny as that is. And so both players being able to use both as utility in their kit is g not going to make or break the game, but definitely hold the tide in a certain aspect. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I think that these characters playing around these items, as you said, very item-heavy characters. Um, you have Banjo being able to grab grenade. Um, and, I mean, technically it's not a grabbable item, but egg and platform and bounce pad, I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. Uh, I don't I'll know. just call it jump pad. Yeah. Um, but egg, grenade, jump pad, these are all options. Also, you can grab the peanut from Pop Gun. Yeah, exactly. And so there's so many items that are going to be thrown around, tossed around, lots of projectiles, lots of just brain games of when to throw it, mm -hmm. how to throw it, all these different things. That's going to be huge. But yep. we are getting into this next game. BKR is going to, or no, um, the Banjo Kazooie is going to go down to two stocks. And here we are into this next game. And we'll see if BKR is able to do it. And as we expected, yep. lots of projectiles, lots of neutral, where when we use the term, okay, uh, the Duke, why don't you explain neutral? What, so, what is neutral okay. play? Well, to explain neutral, I think it's best if I explain advantage, because I think that's the easiest state to understand in Smash Bros. Whereas you are currently comboing someone. So you are in the lead, you're hitting them, and they really can't hit you in that space. Whereas this advantage is you are, the op or you are being comboed or being hit by your opponent. And neutral is kind of like the fairground between the two, where you're both trying to get an opener into the advantage state and trying to run away from the disadvantage state. If Wonder that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Right. And so these two characters, them kind of fishing for the advantage state, trying to hope for this one specific move that can put them in advantage. And <laughs> wow, that such a that Wonder Wing is so strong, able to kill at such low percents, especially close to the ledge. And right now, Wayne State resetting it back down to two stocks apiece. Both Wayne State and Sagu having five stocks to their team. And we're going to see if BKR can try and close out this game and give them some kind of lead. But BKR playing Pop Gun, Banana, being a... Any time Diddy Kong has Banana in his hand, he's a threat. It's true. The whole time he has Banana in his hand, he is a very scary monkey. I would argue that Diddy Kong is simply a threat. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. I would agree with you. And, and like, him having banana in his hand, it doesn't add to his threat level, it multiplies it. Correct. Because any time banana is, oh, and him grabbing grenade and using it against him, but Wonder Wing being so strong, but monkey flip. Yep. And he has as many as he wants. So both of these characters actually have a very similar play style now that I'm kind of looking at it. Um, it's just Diddy Kong is a lot more aggressive, a lot more advantage-heavy character. And Banjo. going to that forward smash and getting the stock. Yeah, I was going to say, Banjo is a little bit more of the sit back and throw down a projectile, whereas Diddy Kong will throw that projectile, but in the hopes of being able to either get a grab or get something that will combo into something else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Diddy Kong is a lot more aggressive. Banjo Kazooie is a lot more neutral, a lot more patient. Um, but both players playing to their strengths very, very well. 
and BKR using banana. And, and, and use a using a Wonder Wing for fun, you know, for just because yeah, just because he wants to. You know, we can do that. He doesn't need all five. And these these aerial attacks coming out from both. Uh, oh, oh wow! My great banana. But man, as we're saying, that Wonder Wing is so strong. And the great thing about Diddy Kong recovering against Banjo is Monkey Flip is so fast. Oh, yeah, and that just kills. Yeah, and that that down tilt killing, but. But Monkey Flip is so fast, he doesn't really have to worry about the eggs off stage because he can go underneath them and move so quickly that they're not really a threat. Yeah, for the most part. I, for the I, most I, part. I agree with that. But BKR, seeing the full wow. might of all these projectiles, getting forced off stage, but doing his best, getting a banana to try and disrupt the game plan of this Banjo Kazooie. And both playing a pretty heavy neutral. I mean, it's, it's an even game. It's a very even game. And both, with enough well-placed hits, that could be the stock. So both are actually playing pretty safe, pretty reserved. Oh. Getting the up special. That was huge for BKR. Going for the down tilt. Pressuring. What? I've never seen Monkey that. Monkey Flip can grab against Wonder Wing. That is huge. And BKR using that to his full advantage. It being a command grab is. I mean, so I know that it was a command grab, but and that's Wonder Wing. Wow. BKR getting the banana into the forward smash. That command grab was huge. Yeah. It was, it was, it was 10 Wonder million Wing. IQ. We, I've. I always He's assumed a Wonder genius. Wing. I, I mean, BKR just different level, <laughs> different kind of player. I always thought Wonder Wing was kind of like the the um, the end all be all. Yeah, of it's kind of like a mini smash <laughs> move, like a, a mini, mini final smash. Yeah, it's a mini final smash, but apparently it is not immune to command grabs. Diddy Kong just said, "Nope." No, I'm my command grab is better than your limited ultra death move. I will say, coming from a stock down and it, it, it a deficit. Wow. That was a phenomenal game played by both BKR and the Banjo-Kazooie. Both of them did a really good job, and BKR, once again, keeping this lead was strong. Very well played. But also that Banjo-Kazooie did a great job at keeping it still within manageable, um, with, within a manageable difference. Sure, yeah. And, wow, this is a, this is a good game. I So, wow. does do you think that... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking... If a command grab can knock Banjo out of Wonder Wing, and granted, I don't watch a lot of Banjo gameplay. Uh, he's not a character that I really play. Mm. Do you think that Steve Minecart could grab him out of Wonder Wing, or do you think that Wonder mm. Wing would interrupt the hitboxes of Minecart uh, and break Minecart? Steve's Minecart is very interesting. Because well, so because that breaks the game in of itself. Because yeah. it's a projectile or a projectile command grab that yeah. also has hitboxes. So sometimes it doesn't grab you and it just pushes you. Yeah, yeah. And as we said last week, a hitbox is a codified m mechanic for doing damage to someone else. And Steve, who's a character in this game who came from Minecraft, where you build things and all that different stuff, he has an ability that shoots out a minecart. Well, when he's in the minecart. It does damage to the opponent. Yeah. When he's not in the minecart, it grabs the opponent against Most their will. Most of the time. Most of the time. But I don't know. I want to lab it now. Yeah, I honestly think that minecart would win that. I really do. I don't know, man. I, th I think Wonder Wing. Wonder Wing's just too good of a move. Really? Well, we just saw a small That's monkey true. grab That's him out of it. That's very true. So I don't know. <laughs> like, anything's possible in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate at this point. I, mean, I guess that's fair. Um, but we are about to hop into this next game with BKR versus... <laughs> Chef Louie mm -hmm. on Terry. He's got such a good Terry. And we're about to see if, I mean, as we said, when you've got one stock, your job is to get one get on one. Yep. the opponent. Just get one stock. That's your game plan. So we're going to see if BKR can get that one stock and hopefully put Taylor Halo in an advantage. That would be the ultimate game plan. But going to the next game, we're going to see what the game plan is. And Chef Louie going right for the offensive. Now having Banana, not able to use it. But wow, putting out a lot of damage really early. Terry being such a good character for that. And using Banana, now BKR being at 85%. This is a bad spot to be in for BKR. But <laughs> 98? But oh, Monkey that Flip, was risky. That was very risky. If he had timed that forward smash right, that would have been it. But now 
This Terry, 82%, wow, both are at kill percent. BKR bringing it back with just a couple combos. And now we will see who's able to take the stock off of the opponent. And BKR playing around Banana very well. And, uh, and there he goes, catching the peanut. And BKR using forward tilt to try and pressure him off stage. Oh, Whoa. reading the monkey flip, I think. I Getting mean, the power, guys. Wow. I want to say, I almost want to say that was auto turnaround. Uh, yeah, probably. Because I've seen I've seen things similar, and I think that it auto turned around through to hit him in that monkey flip. Because that <laughs> barely caught. That was incredible. Wow. What a read. And whether it was a read or not, I, that I'm going to say that it probably was, and he probably knew that auto turnaround would do that. Yeah. Because he knows his character. Yeah, probably. What a read. By Chef Louie. That's insane. That was, and I mean, BKR did really good getting him to kill percent, but man, <laughs> that was just such a good, oh, such no. a good string by Chef Louie. And now we're back to it. The three stock, three stock, Taylor Halo versus Chef Louie. And I mean, last game, we really saw Taylor struggle against this Terry gameplay. So we'll see but if you he know can. know what Taylor Halo does? Hmm. Is Taylor Halo adapts, as well as Chef Louie. And I think that's why Chef Louie was able to get that um, upper hand on him last uh, last time that they kind of duked it out. Hmm. But this time, I'm wondering if Taylor is going to replace that reflector with his power thrust. Hmm. You think so? I don't know. I think that. I, honestly, I don't know. It's not my character. He used reflector a good bit and it helped him. Mm -hmm. But I think having the power thrust, which is so quick, does so much damage. It's a kill move. It's like really fast, yep. and it and it's it can cross up depending on where you hit it. I don't know. I think power thrust. I think either one. Either one is a good way to get, like a good option to go for. It just adds another element to the game that Chef Lou is gonna have to play. No, absolutely. It just that one move can change so much yep. about the outcome of the game, the play styles, how both players kind of read each other and try to predict what they're going to do. Right. Like, I mean, Power Thrust is a whole mechanic now that you have to worry about of him just shooting it out and getting a bunch of damage. And I think, personally, I think just the mix-up alone could prove to be very effective. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, Taylor. Uh, Taylor, there we go. Isabel is, um, as I have recently discovered, is not a good character. Not a good character. So, yes. the me, But me Sword Fighter isn't either. But the thing about... <laughs> The That's thing about uh, Taylor Halo is oh, that his Me Sword one, three, Fighter two, three. is power thrust. Yeah, that one three two three Me Sword Fighter means he is going power thrust. Which honestly, that mix up alone, I think is going to change so much about how this game is played. Yeah. And honestly, even if he doesn't use it, oh, just he went one three two two. Oh, he switched back to reflector. He did. Okay. Wow. wow. At the last second, switching back to reflector. Him having confidence in that reflector gameplay. And you know what? I trust him. I think he can do it with the reflector. Are you ready to see some super mashing if he gets grabbed? <laughs> I am. I am very ready. But here he goes, playing neutral, playing a good neutral, being patient, trying to go for these these, these uh, early leads. Okay. And him playing really smart, but Terry able to close the distance very quickly. And wow, the, the cross up. And going for a landing neutral air attack. Very good. Getting the grab, throwing him off stage. And he's pressuring him really well. Tatalo trying to get these, these combos going, but both at pretty even percent. Ooh, uh, pardon our quietness. We are. Yeah, I'm so. We I'm, are very. There is so much going on. <laughs> And both players playing really well, playing really patient. This neutral is is so smart and methodical. And all oh, that poking through the shield. Yep. Which is a mechanic where when your shield gets smaller, if you are hit by a hitbox or a move that is hitting you but not your shield, it is still going to hit you. Yeah, and that mechanic alone can make a lot of moves very effective. And like as we saw there, just amazing. The Great, yeah, and Power Geyser. Yep. Terry with that go meter is so dangerous. But Taylor keeping as much, giving himself as much wiggle room as possible. Trying to take his lead and getting the dash attack oh and goodness. not taking the stock. And wow, what a great air dodge by Chef Louie. But that forward tilt takes the stock and now down to 2 2. Taylor doing really good. 
so is Chef Louis. I yeah. mean, both of these guys are just... I mean, it's an even game. It is an even game. This is as even as even gets. And these guys are playing absolutely out of their mind. Playing very, very well. Oh, almost getting the spike there. I was about to say, if that was maybe 20% higher, uh, we yeah. would have seen that would have Halo, been Halo be gone. Absolutely. But Taylo doing his best, keeping a slight lead, and extending that lead as much as he can. Trying to go for these tornado up airs, pressuring Chef Louie off stage. Ooh, going for the risky forward smash. Gets hit by it, but not too bad. Still keeping that a strong lead. Go meter turn on. Becomes a very scary situation for yeah. Taylor Halo. Once that go meter is up, everything becomes so much more dangerous. Like that power geyser, as you saw, that thing can kill really early, but Taylor, great grab there. Really good option. I wonder if Chef Louie's been practicing this because he is dealing with Tornado like a champ. Yeah, he, he's doing really good against this Tornado neutral. And Taylor going for the... Going for these hopeful kill confirms. See that up smash Ooh. and... Oh. Yep, true combo. Oh, my goodness. And now the percentages are reset with that oh. one move. But both players... Playing patient, playing safe, lots of shields, but... Man, uh, it's almost as if his character turns around on his own. Yeah. Oh, but Taylor Halo, I, I don't know if that one was actually auto turn around. It seemed like he knew where Taylor was going. Honestly, I think a lot of these are him just knowing, oh, if that had connected, that probably would have been at least close to the stock. But man, Taylor is 74%, but we've seen him in these situations before. Taylor is the king of clutch. He knows how to get stuff done, and look at that, tearing out 50%, it's pretty even. It's scary because they're both at a last stock situation, last game of the actual match. Oh my goodness. And the next stock will win this set. Terry getting a lot of damage, but Taylor playing really smart. Capitalizing on a lot of these mistakes, pressuring, hoping for a tornado here. Because a well-placed tornado would be exactly what he needs. Or a grab, or... And trying to close out this stock. Without trying to use and that is... Oh! Oh! And, oh, and going for the oh double up Oh my goodness, look at the pop-off. And pop taking off. the stock, wow! Oh my goodness. Getting the first, missing that first up air, but it then was, reading the DI. It was the weak hit, red DI, into the strong hit of up All air. All right, we're using so many sorry, terms. Sorry, sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to try and break, we're going to try and break this down for you. So, he, in that last little exchange... They are playing neutral, they're playing safe, and Taylor Halo, Taylor Halo gets the grab. For me, Sword Fighter, this is huge Correct. at the percent, because that is what's known as a kill confirm. If you can get that grab, go into a down throw, it's, it has a set projectile where if you can read where they're going to move in mm -hmm. the air, you can hit them with an up air, and it's almost a guaranteed stock. The thing is, though, you have to be extremely precise yeah. with your up air, because there's two different ways you can hit someone. You can hit someone with a really strong kill confirm hitbox, or the really weak hitbox, and that's the one we don't want. So when Taylor Halo grabs him, does the down throw, he shoots up, goes for the up air, that first up air was that softer hitbox. It, it has hitboxes on the side that are going to send off um, either up or away. I, th I believe like it's away. sideways. And it also depends on what the opponent does. Uh, which is called the directional input, and that's going to move an opponent a certain way based on the hitbox. So what happened was, is that weak hitbox hit, Chef Louie had DI'd most likely out, I believe. Yeah. And Halo Halo reading this, used his second jump to jump in and use the strong hitbox of that move, just barely catching onto Terry's legs and taking that last stop. Wow. That, Amazing. <laughs> and this is why, this is why Taylo Halo is just such a strong fighter in this Smash Bros. ring. Because his ability to just make those last second... I mean, literally, probably about the span of like a second, a second and a half, all of that happened. And all, he knew. And he knew exactly what was going on. He knew what he needed to do. Him Ugh. reading Chef Louie's directional input, getting that up air. And the second one, making sure it's the strong hitbox 
so well played. And honestly, we saw really good performances from every single one of these Sagu Lions. Efer getting some really strong pop-offs, I'm getting getting really pivotal stocks, yeah. especially in that third game. And then BKR. He just oh loves my goodness BKR gracious. Matchup. Like like BKR just doing so well playing with playing with the the banana matchup, mm -hmm. knowing how to play against this Banjo Kazooie, getting stocks off the Terry even, and Taylor Halo. The clutch master. He's just good. Being able to close out these last second high tension games. And there you have it. The Sagu <laughs> Lions <laughs> continuing oh, their undefeated streak going 3-0. and Sagu winning 2-1. Against Wayne State, that was the reigning such champions. I might add the reigning champions of the last competition last semester, and Sagu just proving how strong. The I mean, just proving how strong they are. And honestly, I mean, does that make Sagu the reigning champions as of right now? I, I mean, know. that's up for debate. I'll let we'll let the viewers decide. Yeah, put in the comments wherever you're watching this from. I mean, I mean, wait, wait, you do I mean, have to win the this championship. Is, okay, but we beat the reigning champions. So okay, I mean, but this that, is where it gets controversial, know, I, I and know. that's why it's not our decision to make. All right, we'll, yeah. Hey, tell you what, we'll come back to this question once in we see people in the playoffs. Championship. There you go. Once we see you in playoffs, we'll see how this goes. But I think that's going to be it for this Sagu uh, Sports Network broadcast. <laughs> My name is Evan the Astro Kid, and I've got here... <laughs> I'm the Duke. And this has been so much fun. Thank you guys for tuning in. Keep in mind, we've got Valorant on Tuesday nights, which is a phenomenal game. We've got Rocket League on Wednesday nights and Call of Duty on Friday nights. And here, Super Smash Brothers on Monday nights on the Sagu Sports Network. Also, shout out to the Sagu Esports uh, broadcast, YouTube, all the things. Go... Um, follow on Twitter, follow on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all the things. We'd love to get your feedback. Please talk to us. Let us know what you're thinking. Tell us how, like, I mean, that literally on the edge of your seat, everything. We want to know it all. I know we were I here. Was. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm standing, like I, half the time I wasn't even commentating because I was so invested in the game. <laughs> and so this has been it for the Sagu Sports Network, and we will see you guys tomorrow.